Leviticus chapter 11, continued. Theme, the food of God's people, clean and unclean animals, contact with carcasses of unclean animals, contact with carcasses of clean animals, contamination of creeping creatures, classification of clean and unclean made by a holy God. Clean and unclean creatures, on the water. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas, and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you, they shall be even an abomination unto you, ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. Whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you, Leviticus 11 9-12. There is a sharp line drawn here as well as among animals. The clean fish must be characterized by two visible marks, fins and scales, to be clean. This rule applied to both fresh and saltwater fish. Crawling creatures in the water were forbidden, which would eliminate a great segment of the creatures of the waters. No examples are given, probably because the distinction is very clear-cut. Israel depended on the supply of fish from the Mediterranean Sea, the Sea of Galilee, and the Jordan River. Fish played a prominent part in the diet of the nation. One of the gates of Jerusalem was called the Fish Gate. This is where the fish from the Mediterranean were brought in, and it is interesting that this was a problem in the times of Nehemiah. The fishermen would bring in their fish on the Sabbath day, Nehemiah 13 16-22. The important role of fishing in the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ is well known to the student of the New Testament. The first disciples our Lord called were fishermen. They were told that they were to become fishers of men. Jesus told the parable that the kingdom of heaven is like a net which caught good fish and bad fish, Matthew 13 50 What was the method of determining the good from the bad fish? It is not whether the fish were large or small but would be according to the Levitical law. A fish that has both fins and scales is clean, or good. Now how is this like the judgment of the wicked from among the just? Well, the believer is the one who is propelled by the Holy Spirit and who is clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Those are the two identifying marks. Those are the fins and the scales, if you please. Clean and unclean flying creatures, in the air. And these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls, they shall not be eaten, they are an abomination, the eagle, and the ossifrage, and the osprey, and the vulture, and the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the night hawk, and the cuckoo, and the hawk after his kind, and the little owl, and the cormorant, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the gear eagle, and the stork, the heron after her kind, and the lapwing, and the bat, Leviticus. 11 13-19. On the birds there are no visible markers like there are on the fish and the animals. But they seem to have in common that they are all unclean feeders. For the most part, they feed on dead carcasses of animals, fish, and other fowl. A list of unclean birds of Palestine is given. This is another point that reveals that the Mosaic system was intended for the nation Israel and also for the particular land of Palestine. Some of these birds sound strange to us. They fall into the family of the eagles and the hawks, the vultures and the ravens, the owls and cormorants, and the swans and pelicans. They don't even sound appetizing. They are the dirty birdies because of their feeding habits. Now remember, some people eat some of these birds today. I can't say I would like any of them, but whether we eat them or don't eat them makes no difference, meat will not commend us to God. The point is that it was teaching Israel to make a distinction. They had to make a decision about what was clean and unclean. The lesson for us today is that we must make decisions about our conduct and our profession. We have to make the decision about whether to accept Christ or not, whether to study the Word of God or not, whether to walk in a way pleasing to God or not. That is the application for us today. This section throws some light on the experience of Elijah. He was fed by the ravens, dirty birds. Elijah did not eat the ravens, but they fed him. This was a humbling experience for this man of God who obeyed God in every detail. Clean and unclean creeping creatures, on the ground. 
all fowls that creep, going upon all four, shall be an abomination unto you. Yet these may ye eat of every flying creeping thing that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet, to leap with all upon the earth, even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. But all other flying creeping things, which have four feet, shall be an abomination unto you, Leviticus 11 20-23. Well, folks, you can leave all of these off my menu. However, we must note that some of them are clean. These were apparently four species of locusts. The locust was the regular species, the bald locust had a protuberance, the beetle was a locust with a protuberance and a tail, the grasshopper was a locust with a tail but without a protuberance. So they were permitted to eat these four kinds of locusts. But, friend, if you're having me over for dinner, let's have something else on the menu. Although they don't appeal to me, there is nothing religiously or ceremonially unclean about them. John the Baptist had a scriptural diet when he ate locusts and wild honey. Contact with carcasses of unclean animals. And for these ye shall be unclean, whosoever toucheth the carcass of them shall be unclean until the even. And whosoever beareth aught of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes, and be unclean until the even. The carcasses of every beast which divideth the hoof, and is not cloven-footed, nor cheweth the cud, are unclean unto you, every one that toucheth them shall be unclean. And whatsoever goeth upon his paws, among all manner of beasts that go on all four, those are unclean unto you, whoso toucheth their carcass shall be unclean until the even. And he that beareth the carcass of them shall wash his clothes, and be unclean until the even, they are unclean unto you, Leviticus 11 24-28. Not only was Israel forbidden to eat unclean animals, but also they were forbidden to touch the carcass of an unclean animal. Contamination by contact is the principle here. This was a great principle of life that was restated in the days of the return of Israel after the captivity. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Ask now the priests concerning the law, saying, If one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, and with his skirt do touch bread, or pottage, or wine, or oil, or any meat, shall it be holy? And the priests answered and said, No. Then said Haggai, If one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priests answered and said, It shall be unclean, Haggai 2 11-13. There is a very important principle set before us here. Cleanness or holiness is not transferred by contact. On the contrary, dirt, sin, and unholiness are transferred by contact. In other words, it is impossible to bring holiness out of the unholy. But the unclean can affect the clean. An unrighteous man cannot produce righteous works which are acceptable to God. You cannot bring righteousness out of unrighteousness. This principle operates as a law in every realm of life and in all strata of society. A gallon of dirty water is not made clean by adding a gallon of clean water. On the other hand, one drop of dirty water will contaminate the clean water. A boy with the measles is never cured by contact with a boy who is well, but the well boy may very well catch the measles from the sick boy. A Christian cannot mingle with the world and play with sin without becoming contaminated. Where do we get the idea that a Christian can dabble with drugs and drinking and nightclubs and wild parties? Some claim that the way to reach the lost is to meet them on their level. Well, do they reach the lost that way? No, they are contaminated and take part in those sins themselves. The New Testament is clear on this. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh, Jude 23. It is a terrible mistake to mix and mingle with sin. We are to beware of all contamination. An Israelite was reminded of this great principle when he walked along the road and saw a dead dog or a dead bear. He was forbidden to carry the carcass or any part of it. He was not to take a bone or the skin for any use. If he inadvertently touched the carcass of an unclean animal, he was to wash his garments and remain unclean until the end of the day. These are great spiritual lessons for us. The Christian is sanctified by the redemption of Christ and is clothed with his garments of righteousness. But we walk through the world where we can become contaminated. We still have the old nature. 
Not until we lay down this body in death will we be completely and totally sanctified and removed from the very presence of sin. These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth, the weasel, and the mouse, and the tortoise after his kind, and the ferret, and the chameleon, and the lizard, and the snail, and the mole. These are unclean to you among all that creep, whosoever doth touch them, when they be dead, shall be unclean until the even, Leviticus 11 29-31. These are creatures that live on the ground or under the ground. They must have been rather commonplace but they were to be avoided by the Israelite. The carcass of a mole could contaminate him as much as the carcass of an elephant. So he was constantly reminded that he lived in a world of fallen creatures, and that little sins are as heinous in God's sight as big sins. The mote and the beam are alike to God. Little sins are also sin and must be avoided. And upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, doth fall, it shall be unclean, whether it be any vessel of wood, or raiment, or skin, or sack, whatsoever vessel it be, wherein any work is done, it must be put into water, and it shall be unclean until the even, so it shall be cleansed. And every earthen vessel, whereinto any of them falleth, whatsoever is in it shall be unclean, and ye shall break it. Of all meat which may be eaten, that on which such water cometh shall be unclean, and all drink that may be drunk in every such vessel shall be unclean. And everything whereupon any part of their carcass falleth shall be unclean, whether it be oven, or ranges for pots, they shall be broken down, for they are unclean, and shall be unclean unto you. Nevertheless a fountain or pit, wherein there is plenty of water, shall be clean, but that which toucheth their carcass shall be unclean, Leviticus 11 32-36. Now we go into the kitchen. It must have been a commonplace experience for some rodent to get into the kitchen of that day and fall into one of the vessels and die. Any earthen vessel had to be broken and the water or grain or whatever was in it had to be thrown out. A bronze vessel was to be scoured clean. You see, God taught His people cleanliness in the preparation of food. And He was teaching them a lesson in holiness. Every vessel was holy to God and it was all to remain clean. In the Mosaic system, cleanliness was next to godliness and this applied to even the smallest detail in domestic situations. God guarded His people against contamination and pollution. If the dead carcass fell into a fountain or a lake, the water was not contaminated. It was too big and too fresh. Isn't it wonderful that the Lord Jesus Christ is the fountain of living water? He is not contaminated by contact with the sinner or the sick the leper or the woman with an issue of blood. Jesus said, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life, John 4:14. 4, also in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me, and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly, shall flow rivers of living water, John 7 37-38. And if any part of their carcass fall upon any sowing seed which is to be sown, it shall be clean. But if any water be put upon the seed, and any part of their carcass fall thereon, it shall be unclean unto you, Leviticus 11 37-38. Now we leave the kitchen and go out into the field and the food production. Dry seed that was to be sown could not be contaminated by contact with a carcass of the unclean. However, if the seed was wet, then its shell or armor had been penetrated and it was unclean. This is why the child of God needs a shell or armor today. We are told, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, Ephesians 6 11. Contact with carcasses of clean animals. And if any beast, of which ye may eat, die, he that toucheth the carcass thereof shall be unclean until the even. And he that eateth of the carcass of it shall wash his clothes, and be unclean until the even, he also that beareth the carcass of it shall wash his clothes, and be unclean until the even, Leviticus 11 39-40. Any clean animal that died of itself or of disease was unclean. In Malachi 1 8 God forbade the sacrifice of any animal that was lame or sick. God will not accept the second best or the cast-off from us either. Contamination of Creeping Creatures 
and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth shall be an abomination, it shall not be eaten. Whatsoever goeth upon the belly, and whatsoever goeth upon all four, or whatsoever hath more feet among all creeping things that creep upon the earth, them ye shall not eat, for they are an abomination. Ye shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth, neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them, that ye should be defiled thereby, Leviticus 1141-43. Everything that crept on the earth or that went on its belly was unclean. God gives the reason they should not become unclean with them. For I am the Lord your God, ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy, neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt, to be your God, ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy, Leviticus 1144-45. All creeping things were unclean as representatives of the fall of man when the serpent was cursed and made to crawl on its belly. Classification of clean and unclean made by a holy God. This is the law of the beasts, and of the fowl, and of every living creature that moveth in the waters, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten, Leviticus 11:46-47. It is God who makes the sharp distinction between the clean and the unclean. Holiness in little things is essential. This is the real test for God's man. The acid test of any life of any of God's people is this. God says, I am your Lord. I am holy. Be ye holy. My friend, you must make the decision as to whether you are going to walk with God and for God in this contaminated world. This is the lesson for us from his chapter of the clean and the unclean.